Hey, thanks so much for tuning into the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. Hopefully you have been encouraged and challenged all week long. Today is Thursday. We're going to be at Exodus chapter 13. Uh, you've been encouraged and challenged throughout these chapters. To give you some context, if you missed any days, uh, God protected the Israelites from the angel of death, the last plague, killing the firstborn of every single family, including the livestock. But God gave clear instructions to um, to do you know the the lamb and the blood and over the doorpost and there was a Passover and God protected each family of the Israelites and then God gives the, these clear instructions for these uh, ceremonies to to remind the people of God's faithfulness to remind them of God's protection and then He goes on to another one in in um, verse or in in chapter thirteen that could easily be passed over no pun intended there. But there could be, there's a lot of things in the Bible that we can easily be like, well, that's not important to me. That's ceremonial laws. That's Old Testament. You know, what does that have to do with me today? But that is something that uh, we can, we can gain such uh, rich uh, faith and heritage and just conviction from the, the Old Testament. That's why we're going through the book of Exodus and the life lessons that we can learn from Moses on Sunday mornings as well. But there is some great um, application that we can take today from this uh, this consecration of the firstborn, the ceremony here. Let's let's read it, and then we'll bring some application to it. Uh, verse eleven of chapter thirteen, and I'll read through verse sixteen. Says this: After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you as He promised an oath to you and your and your ancestors, that's the promised land that He already had promised uh, the Israelites. You are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey. But if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed the firstborn of both people and animals in Egypt. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. And it will be like a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Now, by no means am I telling uh, farmers and other breeders to kill their firstborn out of their livestock. That's not, or their pets or anything like that. So hear me out. That's not what I'm saying. So what does that mean? How, what can we learn? What, what's some, what's the application that we can, we can glean from this, uh, this story right here? Well, think about what you have today. Think about what I have today. Uh, think about all the, the resources and, um, the, the time that we have, the, the talent that we have, you know, the money, the, the other, you know, possessions that we have. Think about, what you have and I'll think about how you got it and think about how everything you have comes from the Lord. See, God's protection, his provision, uh, uh, the the strength and the, the giftings that we have come from him. And what God is saying to, to the Israelites and what I believe God is telling us even today is this, honor me with what you have. This, this can easily be correlated to another scripture uh, in the Bible, it says, give God your first fruits and saying that, God, everything that I have, all my possessions, my time, my, the energy, the giftings, the, the money, um, everything that I have ultimately belongs to you. And so to honor that, I'm going to give you a portion of that. And that's what God is saying here. And that's the challenge for every single one of us. It doesn't make sense financially and it, nor does it, um, you know, you talk to any financial advisor or anything like that, like it doesn't make sense. Okay, God, I'm going to give to your work. I'm going to give to to my to my local body of Christ and say, hey, this is this is this is my portion to help fund the work of God. It doesn't make sense, but just see what God does in and through you as you obey His word, as what He says right here. See, you're honoring the Lord with what you have, and when you choose to do that, time and time again, as you read through the Bible, and time and time again, as you Maybe you've experienced a person or maybe heard of someone else where if they have followed those commands to say, God, I'm going to give you a portion of what I have because ultimately it's yours and I want to honor you with that. And it says in your word that when I do that, there'll be a blessing on my life. And so I want to encourage you to do that. If you've never 
given to the Lord before, I want to encourage you to do so and see what God does in and through you. See, the challenge was from the very beginning of the Bible, and it's no different today. Let's see what God does in and through us as we choose to honor God with what he has entrusted to us. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you tune in tomorrow from the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth.